So if you have any trouble with any of your Tri-County Tech, you call that number. If you have trouble with, is this the one? Yeah. If you have trouble trying to cut down on the background noise, so I'm going to try to use this. Maybe it'll, I don't know. May help, may not. But anyway, uh, anything having to do with my lab plus 1-800-677-6337. I also, I don't know, but that may be an old number. So if you need a uh, new number, go up to the top right hand corner of your um, my lab plus and I think there's a support button up there or support icon click link or whatever uh, click it and it'll tell you the most recent number but that one does work because I called this morning to check it and it still goes to Pearson and they may direct you to another number but it still goes to that one okay now I would only use this with home computer issues, okay? Do not use it for password and ID because then you'll, it'll be in, you'll be in a cycle. It'll be like you're in a loop. You'll, you won't know your password, they'll change it, and then you'll try to use that password and it won't work, and then you'll have to call them back. Don't. Password or username, you call uh, those two emails or you email those two emails I showed you on the email while ago. Anything having to do with your software on your computer not jiving or something wrong with it, then you need to call the MyLabs Plus people. Um, like I said, one of my students this morning told me that um, he remembers seeing that, what was in that email while ago uh, that I had up there. And he said that's probably the reason he couldn't get his to work. So that email does work because several people uh, said it does. So try that and you couldn't get logged on. And if you can't, email those two uh, email addresses. And if you're having a problem with software, then go with the 1-800 number and pull that, pull that up, okay? All right. That takes care of that. Now, hmm, I said now. I just said now. Oh, <laughs> That's all right. Um, I think today we're going over My Labs Plus, and when you go to My Labs Plus and you get logged on, get registered. You'll come up to a screen like this. Of course, you won't have these classes, but I didn't know you could. This is a new. This is a new thing. Evidently, they changed the dashboard a little bit. But you'll click on your class, which is Math 103, and it'll come up to a dashboard with a calendar, probably, if it ever comes up. Eventually, it'll come up. In the next couple of hours, I hope it'll come up. Still waiting. Okay. Never taking this long. Well, how was y'all's weekend? <laughs> y'all not gonna talk to me? Too short. Too short. Yeah, I was feeling that way last night. I was working on one of my courses that I do online. And uh, I said, dang, the weekend's done gone. Okay, this is taking entirely too long. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> I just got out of it all together. I'm just going to go back and pull it back up. I'm on, they don't have the Zilla Firefox on here. Another day, here it is. And I was drunk? <laughs> when was this? I don't even know. Zeke's, that's in Sandy Springs. That's what she told me she saw you. No, I haven't been in that store in five or six years. 
Okay, she needs to get her storage straight. It wasn't Zeke's. It wasn't Zeke's because I haven't been in Zeke's since I was teaching at Tri County. That's been a while, and that's I didn't stop in that store very much. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. What? She needs to get her story straight. That's the wrong thing. Yeah, they changed this all together. Well, you can use it after you log. See, they force y'all to go through Blackboard. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they do. They got this thing about Blackboard. They want, I guess, because nobody uses it, they got to force people to go through and use it. So when it's up, and after after you get logged on and registered, you can go through this site. But I'm not supposed to tell you that because I don't want to shortchange y'all from going through Blackboard. I can't stand to be forced to do stuff. I can't stand that. That was the wrong password, did it? And we got like 15 different passwords. Okay, we're waiting. Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm waiting. It says waiting for PCTC. That's fine. I don't care. Refresh Firefox. Really? Now, I haven't had this trouble all morning. Y'all come in here and mess up my class. I gotta do it again. I've been I taught two classes this morning and I hadn't had a single problem. It's Miss Vest's fault. Yeah, it's your fault. Options, allow pop-ups, go away. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. I'm supposed to get mad and quit and email my teacher and tell them I can't get logged on. That's what I'm supposed to do. All right, here's the... Now, if you notice, I have a test due today. It's available today and due today. Now, some of y'all hammies, y'all gonna have a heart attack right now. This has nothing to do with you. I'm gonna show you one of my tests, but what I'm showing you right now is when you're, you have homework that's available and due, It'll show on this calendar. So that way you don't have the uh, excuse of what? I didn't know when it was due. Well, that's something good about this, this program. It tells you when things are due. You go to test. What do you think test is for? I can't find your test on Blackboard, Hubert. Did I get a response? Nope. How many times I say I didn't use Blackboard the other day? Three or four times. There it is. And look at there. It has a due date. It has how much time you have. It has how many attempts. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Why do you think I do that? Why do you think I show you that the due date and how much time and how many, how many attempts? So that way you don't write me an email with a one day before the test that says, When's it due? How many attempts do we get? How many minutes is it? It's all there. It's called putting the information on the test site. Homework does the same thing too. It's amazing. Go to homework. And here's the homework. Now, I haven't told y'all this, but I absolutely despise this book. Okay, I despise it because I've never seen a book broke up into 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B. 
I think it's ridiculous. All right. Um, I don't like it because it it tries to dummy down terms for students, and some of them are just ridiculous. Some of them's ridiculous. I mean, I agree with layman's. I teach in layman's terms, but this book goes to the extreme as far as they even dummy down layman terms. And I don't like, I just don't like this book. So a lot of times I don't use problems out of the book. I use problems off of the web assign or I pull problems off of my probability and stats. For the first two units, I pull problems off of it. But I think we're supposed to start with uh, chapter seven or I can't remember. I told y'all I switched around the, there's chapter seven probability and statistics, six or seven. Okay, that's all right. It doesn't matter. I'll just pull it up. Another reason I cannot stand this book is because it doesn't have very many resources for you to ask a question. And I really think that's kind of a jip for y'all because how much do you pay for the book and the access code? How much? You pay a hundred and something. The Math 120 people, they pay a hundred and something. But they get all kind of resources. They get a list of resources like videos, like uh, uh, graphic tutorials, like uh, Ask My Instructor, or not Ask My Instructor, Help Me Solve This and Show Me How to Do This. Huh? Yeah, but this one don't. You, so you're not getting what you pay for. And I really don't like this book. So you're going to have to rely on Ask My Instructor pretty much. Now, I thought I was going to be able to go over that, but I just now remembered that this book doesn't have anything as far as you might be able to go to another homework. Let's go to another homework, and let's see if I can pull up another problem. Let's go to 6C maybe. There. See me before you leave, because I didn't get your name on the... Uh, I didn't check. Hold on. Yeah, you sent me. Okay. I didn't... Um, I just called out the uh, roll a few minutes ago, so I think two people came in since then. Just see me after class. Okay. Um, 6C. Yeah, they don't have any... Okay, this one, okay. They are starting to put a little bit in there. This one has Help Me Solve This. Now, Help Me Solve This is kind of a guided tutorial. And what is a guided tutorial? If you've ever been to a tutoring lab and you sat beside a tutor and they ask you 15 questions to answer one question, that's a guided tutorial. In other words, okay, what number are we on? Number four. Okay, what does it say? Uh, it's asked for a computing and z-score. What is the formula for the z-score? And it asks you question after question after question. Well, that's what the guided, that's what the uh, help me solve this is. It'll ask you questions while you're doing the problem. It's not going to just say, here's what you do, here's what you do, here's what you do, do it. It asks you questions. This can be a good thing, but it can also drive you crazy. It drives me crazy. I can't stand it. All right? Um, so I just tell students, different learning styles for different people. You ever met someone that says, well, I really like to know what I'm doing while I'm doing it. You ever heard, well, that's the guided tutorial. If, you, if you're unfamiliar with a subject and you want to know what you're doing while you're doing it, then that's the guided tutorial. Um, so different learning style there goes through and you punch in a number three, three and three, and it's gonna say no. I'd love to write up these things for one of these companies. Wouldn't you love to? You suck. You should quit school. That's what I would put. I get fired the first week. You really think you're gonna graduate? Anyway, <laughs> I think it would be hilarious to put that. But evidently y'all not gonna laugh, so okay, y'all gonna have to have some emotion in this class, okay? 
I'm not going to sit up here and talk the whole time. If you want Dr. Gabadi or Dr. Anzer, go. But <laughs> y'all are going to have to talk in here, okay? Now, I'm not talking all the time because that gets on the nerves. But anyway, that's what you do with the guided tutorial. Well, it's not the guided tutorial. The view an example. View an example, basically, boom, 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 show me how to do it. And this is for some of you people that don't like to have questions. You just go through and you do it. That's another different learning style. Another different learning style is the visual learner. The visual learner is your videos or your graphic tutorials. And that woman gets on my nerves. Okay? And she's all loud. Hold on a minute. I don't know why it's not very loud. I can't turn it up very loud. Oh well. Here, using the formula, Z is going to equal yeah, the actual height loud. of the women that we're interested in. That is the 64.6. And it shows you how to do it. And we're going to subtract from that the mean. So that takes care of that. Some of you readers out there, it reads like five books in a day. Take you exactly to the book and shows you where in the book you can find the information on this problem. And that's for some of you uh, learning styles that some of you can read a book or read directions and know how to do whatever you need to do. I'm not, I'm a visual learner, so I'm not a reader. So go down to the bottom and that's where you get the information there. Okay, so that's for some of you readers. Now, while I'm at this, this is another way you can get to the book and hit the print button and you can print out this section but i'll show you how to do that in just a second so with the question help you get two types of tutorials you get a, a visual a graphic tutorial or you get the textbook you can print out the homework to say you want to do it conventionally paper and pencil then click on print and you can print out the whole assignment do it, paper and pencil, and then go back in and type in the answer. So that's how you print out your homework. If you want to print it out, that's how you do it. Just go to the first problem of each homework and click on question help and go down to print and hit print assignment. Now, the question that I like. Now, first of all, this is what students ask. They say, well, what do you do if you got all that help online? Well, I'm not there with you at home when you're doing homework, okay? Well, technically I could be. I got so many videos, I probably have something that you could look at that probably get you through the homework. But um, this, uh, these things right here, these four things are for you to get past that homework problem that's halfway through the homework. You know, you get to number 10, and you can't pass number 10 to get to number 15. So this that's what these are for. They're not to substitute for an instructor. They're not to teach you yourself. Um, all they're for is to get you over the hump. Now let's say you go through all four and you're not able to do the problem. And that's when you hit this button. You hit that button. You don't even have to send a message, but I'm gonna send a message so you'll see that it's real time. Somebody is trying to call me, and I don't know that number, but they've called like six times. I don't know who that is. It's a 243 number. 864-243, is that? I don't know who that is. All right, so it's 11.35 a.m., and I'm doing this for a reason. I am clueless because you didn't teach this well enough. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> now I'm doing that for a reason. Now, the next morning, when I'm getting ready for classes, I'll look over my email. I'm sorry, logging me out probably because I'm the only teacher on campus that uses their email in class. 
And there it is. How did I know I didn't send that hour ago? Well, there it is right there. So see how fast it sent it? It sent it just as soon as you hit send, it sent it. And I'll take that and I'll pull it over here and put it in Math 103 questions. And then when y'all come to class, what day is today? When you come to class Wednesday, I'll pull up that 103 and I'll answer all those questions. If I don't have any questions, then what am I going to assume? Two things. That you either know the material or what? You didn't do the homework. But the chances of 100% of the class not doing the homework is very slim. Or the probability is very low. Okay? So chances are if you didn't do it, then you're probably one out of 10 or 15 people that didn't do it. Usually, it takes me a couple of sections, usually a couple of days per section. So I present the material or I present the material halfway and then the other half I present the second day. Or I present the material that is short and then I go over any problems that you have the second day. Usually two to three days is what I spend on each section. Um, now, the first part of your did somebody look on the syllabus or the, did I give you all an outline that has like, yeah, I did. I gave you all the outline, didn't I? It's like the end of the syllabus. Remember I switched the units around? Oh, yeah, you said. Yeah. Tell me what chapters are in the probability of statistics. What chapters are in the statistics? Seven. Just seven by itself? It looks like it. Okay. And it says probability or statistics? It's probability. What's, what's the one above it? That's unit two. It's going to be statistics. Okay, that's the one. You have to change it. That's supposed to be unit one. I'm sorry. Change that to unit one. What chapters is that? That should be more than one chapter. That's it. Chapter five is reading. Okay? So just switch it. Statistics always comes first. So the... So the so the unit, it says statistics, that's the first unit. Probability is unit two. Business math is unit three. And then the top one is unit four. I doubt we'll get to it because I don't like it. Okay? Is that at the end of the syllabus? I thought it was. Can you not find yours? No, the end of the syllabus. It's right there. She, she, you must have not thinking about the right syllabus. There it is. There it is. Right there. I thought you were looking for it. When you were. Okay. I thought you. I'm sorry. Uh, so everybody got that? Statistics. That's unit one. Probability is unit two. Business math, which is unit two, is unit three. And the last one, which is unit one, that's the one I'm going to try not to get to. All right. Now, in Unit 1, Statistics, there's two chapters. The first chapter, 5, how, what sections? A, B, and C, or A, C, and B, or what? A, C, and E. That's all reading. That's what y'all should be reading. When you leave today, you should be reading all of Chapter 5. Well, the sections that you need to cover. One other thing about my class. If I don't cover it, what does that mean for y'all? You don't need it. So those of you that like to do two or three sections of homework ahead, you're rolling the dice. Because <laughs> if I don't cover 5C and you did 5C, that's some extra work for you. And don't ask me for credit because I'm telling you, don't go ahead of me. Because I've been known to take out homework. But I don't cover some things that I don't think is important. Most of you are going to be heading to another liberal arts class like Math 120. Or math, they, math 120, if you're taking Math 120, you're going to take Math 103. So I know what you need if you're going to take Math 120. There's a lot of sections in this book that you don't need. Now, most of the sections in Probability and Statistics, Unit 1 and Unit 2, you're going to need for the Probability and Statistics if you take the 120. But um, the Business Math, we go over at. The only reason I go over the Business Math really well 
is because it's good practical application, real world stuff that you need to know. A lot of people don't even know how to do income taxes. A lot of people don't even know how much they pay. A lot of people are paying 30 to 40 percent of every, every dollar to the government. They don't even know that. And we won't get into that because I'll start getting on my political soapbox. Yes, sir. It should be in the handout that I sent out. Uh, sent it out like Monday or Tuesday of last week. Yeah, I emailed it. Mm -hmm. Should be the first email that said, there's one that says handout, information sheet. That's the first email I sent. The second email I sent was syllabi. And then I sent out a third one Friday that has everything but the syllabi. I, I think there's four handouts. You got it? Good. All right, so that's how you send the homework question to me, and that is what I, that's what I feed off of as far as the class. So if nobody sends me homework questions, we're going to keep on going. But if you start sending me 20,000 email questions, I'm going to start looking for a pattern, and when I see the same questions, I'm just going to go over the same questions. I'm not going to spend too much time on it either. I'm going to use a little bit of common sense. All right? five people sending me how to factor 2x, I'm only going to cover one problem and that'll answer all five of those questions if you're the same question. Okay? And that's homework. That's how you do homework. That's how you print out homework. One more thing. What about doing, uh, typing it in, typing in the answer? Well, I'm going to find an easy problem to do that I don't have to look up a table. Uh, no, this is 6c. I don't need to do 6c. Leave page 6C, maybe 6A. I have no idea who set this, this class up, and I'll explain that in just a minute. At Tri County, every. Uh, I don't want something like that, I've got to calculate. I want something like a median or low. And that's not going to ask me. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Measuring this description. Okay. Okay. Um, every full time instructor at Tri County Tech has a class that they're, they're in charge of. I'm in charge of college algebra and college trig. So when we use My Lab Plus, I had to set those classes up. So that means I set up the weights, I set up the homework. I set up everything. So whoever was in charge of the college, what is this called, Math 103, whoever was in charge of it set this up. So I don't know if they set it up to just get one response on homework or two responses or three responses. There's some teachers that count off if you get three responses. I've got a problem with that, and I'll tell you why. What is the sole purpose of homework? Huh? Practice. So I'm a music teacher. I'm just kidding. I t I'm teaching teaching you all y'all piano, and I want y'all to go home tonight and practice your piano. But you can't practice more than 15 minutes. Now, what's the use of giving somebody practice if you're going to limit how many times they can practice a problem? Does anybody got any kind of answer for that? I don't understand that. That's like sending you home and saying, I want you to practice. I want you to practice real hard, but only for 15 minutes. Don't make any sense. But anyway, some of the teachers, they cut it off to where you can't take it the three times. And if you take it three times, or each time you answer it, it knocks a little bit off the point of the question. I don't do that. So let's see what happens when you get the wrong answer. It says... Which measurement gives the best description of the given average? Okay, let me say state with an explanation whether the mean, median, or mode gives the best description of the following average. The average household income in the state. Okay, which measurement gives the best description of the given average? Well, I would say the mean. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to get it right, so I'm going to say median. It is the best because... 
It has several peaks. I have no idea what the answer is. Once we get it right, check. Sorry, that's not correct. So I go back and I change this to mode. And I say it's probably symmetric. I want to say, I want to say right skew because I don't think that's right. And I hit check answer. Nope, that's wrong. Wouldn't you love to put some answers in this thing? Some descriptions? <laughs> I'd be fired the first week. I would say, you're yeah, right. You have no idea what you're doing. I think that'd be so funny. All right. Anyway, so now I put in third one. I would say, I'm right. I don't care what they say. Well, I get it wrong. Now, this is a good thing about the homework, especially when I, when I said it. Did I turn it on? Um, you hit some of question, and you go through, so you got a, oh, I got a half right. I might not know I get a half right. All right, I don't know which part I got right, but anyway, I'm going to put mean, and I'm going to put what I think is right, symmetric with a single peak. That's what I think is right. Nope. Okay, does anybody know which part I got right? I got this right. Okay, right skewed. Was it right skewed? Left. And then I guess this is mean. Oh, it's medium. Okay. Y'all suck. It's right skewed. It tells you which one is right and which one is wrong. Where? When you answer, the answer's right. Right skewed? Okay. There. Now watch the little X up here. Watch it. Just got to watch it quick now because it's going to do it real quick. Well, this one don't because the book <laughs> sucks. But go back and it changes that X into a, a check. Now, what should everybody turn in on their homework? Will they? 26s. I've had 26s on homework, 23s on homework. Oh, well, we're not talking about one section. We're talking about for the whole semester. Oh. That's a 300. Say that one more time. It's a 300. Why would you not know if you get it right? Because we have people that come to Tri-County Tech that should not procreate. <laughs> and I can say procreate because half the population don't, don't know what that means. means. Okay. <laughs> So, they shouldn't own tractors or knives or guns either. All right? I have a cousin I can say that about. He's a, he's a surgeon, and he don't need a tractor. Because every time he gets on that tractor, two things happen. He either gets it stuck, or he gets hurt on it. He shouldn't have a tractor. Anyway, some people don't have a tractor. Either tractor, knives, or guns, or procreate, or a driver's license. All right. They just should sit home. So any questions about homework? Everybody should turn in 100. Now let me tell you what happens if you don't turn in 100. I mean, if you don't do all your, just like in high school, just like in grammar school, just like in junior high school. If you don't turn in all your homework after the homework is due, at the last day of class, I'm gonna insert what for those incomplete homeworks? And what will that do to your grade? For those three or four people, after the last day of class, they come to me and they say, they email me, and guess what they ask? Why did my grade drop? I have no earthly idea. They think because they're in college that homework doesn't count for anything, even though I told you it counts for 20% of your grade. Now, I am not making this up, all right? Please, I need to start saving these emails and that way I can show y'all, black out the name, kind of like Hillary, I'm sorry, uh, black, out the, black out the name and let y'all see them. Especially when they say, I, I made A's on all, the home, on all the tests, but yesterday my score was 78 and today is 72. I don't understand. Do they get a response? Nope. Something else. Where do you see your grade? Grade book. How about that? Grade book. Isn't that interesting how grade and grade book fit together? Yeah, you wait. You wait till the end of this semester. 
I'm going to post them. <laughs> and this will show you how many hours you actually spend yes. doing that homework. And guess what? It'll show me how many you're doing. Do I hit this thing every time? Yeah. Dang old. They don't look like they old uh, Tony Stark. They old light in the middle of my bag of the shirt. Uh, anyway, ding, ding. Oh, performance, performance issues. Everybody has them. That was uh, Loki. I loved it when Loki, when when Incredible Hulk got Loki and said, "You should kneel before me. I am a god." And thing old Hulk picked him up, slammed him around. Puny god. Anyway, that's a good. That's a good part. I don't understand why. I understand Iron Man being an Avenger. I understand Captain America being an Avenger. I understand the Hulk, and I understand Thor. But what the heck are those other two guys doing on there? One bullet between the eyes, and they're dead. Which one? Nine millimeter girl and the guy with the spring activated bow and arrow. Yeah, what are they doing there? Yeah, they're all there, isn't they? She's pretty big. She's big. Like, she could... One shot between the eyes and she's dead. <laughs> but she could stop it, though. Who? She could stop it. Yeah. They're in there, too. She wouldn't die. She could stop the bullet. Like, 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 Who are you talking about? Nine millimeter girl. She just a spy. She could, she could keep butt. That's the only thing she really does. Yeah, but she does. She's she not a... shot and not a... Yeah. I like when he takes his bow and arrow. I'm like, <laughs> really? That's all you've got? you got one guy that's the God of Thunder. you got one guy that's the Hulk. you got one guy that's Iron Man. you got one guy that's 75 years old. And you got a spring-loaded bow and arrow. I'm sorry. The Avengers should be four, and of course Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Nine millimeter girl and Mr. Electronic Bow and Arrow. I think they should be. Somebody needs to tell them to stay home. <laughs> okay, I don't understand how we got on that, but anyway, it was a good conversation. How did we get on that from here? I don't know. Um, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's it. Tony Stark's my favorite. Hulk's my second favorite. I like, I like, I like Hulk because he just tears off people's heads. I love Thor. Yeah, Thor. I like Thor too. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, nobody likes Captain. I, I don't like Captain America. Well, I like Captain America. I like Captain, Captain America needs two things, and I'm not going to say what he needs, but he needs two things. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'll say one. He needs to go out and get drunk. And then the other thing will come after that, all right? <laughs> he needs it bad. Anyway, that's why I don't like him. He's like, Tony Stark, you should not be doing this. Shut up. Okay. So this tells you, look here, I'm going to show you this. This is, a, this is a neat trick right here. You want to see your homework grade? You pull up homework. You want to see your test grade? You pull up test grade. Isn't that a miracle? So if you don't understand why your grade dropped, you can do what? You can go look. Isn't that great? Grade book, grade, look up grades. Ain't that good how they all fit together? Y'all picking up on any of the sarcasm yet? <laughs> you have a question. Yes, sir. Is the homework that is going to go to still going to be listed on no. the uh, study anything that ha has has the sections that I put that I go over six C six D six whatever. If I cover it, that's going to be counted. If I skip it, I will take it off either the day that I skip it, or I'll take it off at the end of the semester because Miss Best is going to keep up with everything that I skip. <laughs> they already know which students are going to keep up with it. She's going to keep up with it. I'm telling you. Because at the end of the semester, you. what? My daughter warned you. Yeah, my daughter, I mean, your my daughter, my daughter's in Cards of Charleston. Your daughter will be in my 111 class. Isn't she 111 or 140? Yeah. Okay. She's going to tell me which ones I skip in there. She's one of those students. I mean, 
one of those students that don't let the teacher get by with anything. So, but that I do need that. I need somebody to tell me. But usually when I skip it, I take it off during class. So that way all the hammies don't go home and do it and then say, I didn't know you told us not to do it. So that's done. Uh, study plan. When you go to chapter contents, okay, that's enough about grade book. If you want to go pull up your, if you want to pull up your book, go to chapter contents, chapter six. You said A, C, and D. A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Pull up A. There's the online book. You go to the online book. You want to print it out per section. You go. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. It's all Bush's fault. There we go. It's coming up. And there's the print button. So somebody, if you got a book, you don't open it, or because you don't want to open it, you don't take it back. If you if you pull up page 361, it's going to have all this brown color, and then down at the bottom, it's going to have characterizing data. And the good thing about the ebook is when you pull it up, you can actually hit the little camera and it'll show you a little video of what you're going to be going over. It kind of prepares you for the class. Okay? And that's that. But also in the, in the section, chapter contents, you can hit study plan. Study plan is extra problems that are not designed, that are not in the homework. Now, the reason that is, if it's left up to me, if I was to make, now that I tried this in 110 and 111, and I got told to limit it to 20, 20 or below homework problems. So I had to limit it to 20 or below. So each teacher is told to limit their homework questions to 20 or below. Well, look, how many questions are in that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 33 questions there. So there's going to be some homework problems that are not in the homework, but they're in the study plan. So you see what I'm saying? You may have 20 questions, but there's 13 extra questions that you can do on the study plan. Study plan does not count against you. Does it help you? It doesn't help your grade, but it helps you long range because you get more practice. But the study plan, these study plan questions, and the generic test questions do not hurt or hinder your grade. You got that? They're free. They're just problems that's out there. Let me tell you why they're there. Let's say that I'm, I just became a department head or teacher at BFE Community College, all right? and I'm in the math department and I want to start a lab to where students can work on their own and they can go as fast or slow as they want to. And that's, then I would use this and I wouldn't put anything in it and they would use the study plan and the generic test and when they got through with whatever's in the syllabus, whatever grade they made, and I wouldn't have to do anything but answer questions. You see what I'm saying? So the program, uh, My Labs Plus, comes with a generic study plan and test sequence for students that are just doing it like for their own benefit or, or individual study or whatever the case may be. Anything with my name on it, Hubert's Unit 1 test, Hubert's Unit 2 test, or the homework that says 6C, 6A, 6B, that's what you're responsible for. Okay? Question. So does that answer your question about the generic test and the extra study plan question? Okay. Now, let's go to the test. Please don't email me and say, I've looked in Blackboard and I can't find your homework. Please don't email me and say, I've looked in Blackboard and I can't find your test. Will you get a response? No. Look here. Hubert's Unit 1 test. That's what mine will say. I always put my name on it, or I put Unit 1 test, Unit 2 test, Unit 3 test. These do not have Unit 1, Unit 2, see? That's the difference. I will try to delete these. I've tried it before, and some people have it. They set it up to where you can't delete them. Okay, so I will try to delete them, if not from your homework, if not from your visual seeing it, uh, if I can't do that, I'll at least delete it from your 
grade percentages to where it'll be grayed out. You know what grayed out means, don't you? You can't click on it. That'll help you out a little bit. So you click on this guy. Oh, let me show you something else that I might have told you this. What does it have right there? That's the due date. I think I already told you that. And it has the time limit. Yeah, I did because it's five times. And I'm waiting on it to come up. Okay, this is getting very... I don't know what that is. Go away. Let's try it again. All right, look what it says. It says, do you want to start this test? It's asking, you know what this translates to? Is there a flood outside? Is there a tornado outside? Is there a thunderstorm outside? Is there five or six kids running around the house? Y'all get the point? Make sure you're ready to take the test. Don't take it when there's lightning coming down from the sky outside. Because Murphy's Law dictates if there's lightning coming down from the sky and you start this test, which computer is going to get hit? Your computer. Because you're taking the test. It's called Murphy's Law. Anything that will happen, does happen. Anything bad happen, will happen. So do not start a test during a thunderstorm. Do not start a test until everybody is in the house asleep. Do not start a test unless you have a bottle of water beside your desk. You thought I was going to say liquor, didn't you? Start test. Actually, I was going to say Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a little bit sweeter. All right. What? When is the week of finals? B. Quack. D. D. Now, oh no, you're supposed to say, well, Hubert, you don't have the right dates on here. Exactly. Well, this is not your test. What? It is. This, no, December 6th, because that's my birthday. Okay. Yeah. I think it's uh, the 30th. Yeah, bring me a present or you all fail. 30th through the 6th or something like that. All right, but you're going to put D because that's the only answer that makes any what? Let me tell you about December 7th. I'll tell you about December 7th, 1941, when we get to September the 11th, 2001. It's a funny story. Next question. How is Hubert's homework, test, and exams weighed? No, hey. The, the reason you don't pick D is because it doesn't equal 100%. Which one is not... Which one is the answer? C is in Charlie. Why? Are you starting to notice a pattern with my answers? I'm sorry, what? They're fairly simple, but they're almost blank proof. You put in whatever you want to. Starts with an I. Proof. We'll get to the end of the story. We'll get to the end of the story here in a minute. It's not supposed to bunch them up like this, but it's doing it. I don't know why. Why does Hubert not entertain extra credit, extra points, or drop in any grades at the end of the semester? Because he wants me to fail and live in a ditch. <laughs> That's the second best question. I will give you credit if you put that, all right? But it's not because I'm mean. And it's not because my head hurts. Hey, because he drops the lowest grades of every unit test. If this is five, five uh, attempts, I'll drop four. If it's three attempts, I'll drop two. If it's four attempts, I'll drop three. If it's two attempts, I'll drop one. Drop the lowest grade. Uh, when does homework terminate? I don't put should because I don't ever do it. But when should the homework terminate? Let's see, before the test starts. Okay. There's a test question. I usually half it. Or a third. Usually the bonus questions make up a half to a third. Third to a half. Somewhere in there. 
There's a test question. There's a test question, which we will cover all of this. I'm just letting you see what the test looks like. Test question, test question, test question. These are all math questions. When is the last day of class for this semester? <laughs> all right, here's the funny story. I had a student come up to me and say they were offended. They were offended because they had somebody that died in 2000, September 11, 2001. And I said, well, I had somebody die in December 7th, 1941. What was that? They asked me what December 7th, 1941 was. If you're going to sit there and complain about September the 11th, 2001, you ought to at least know what December 7th, 1941 is before you complain about that. Please don't raise your hand and say, I don't know what it was. That's for you to keep quiet when you Google it when you get home. December 7th was what? Pearl Harbor. I also had somebody tell me that they were offended because I was making fun of the Bible for Judgment Day. Judgment Day comes from Terminator. It comes from a movie. I wasn't thinking about the book of Revelation when I was writing this question, okay? But that movie was probably way before their time. Yeah, that's true. Well, no, there's 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 four Terminator movies. I'm offended that you said my teacher sucks. Okay, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> but that's the answer there. Just these people. I told you about black sheep, right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody got offended because I used the word black sheep. In my last plus, upon completion of all assignments, the grade book will give me. Water lily, coconut, contempt. No sneezing in class. Where is all the Hubert's homework and tests done? In the kitchen. That's the best place. In the kitchen. And math question. If you take several forms of a test in Hubert's class, how is it counted? He calls you a loser and fails you. That's the second best question uh, answer. Which branch did I serve in? That's, I'm full of myself. One question on the test, and I'm full of myself. I didn't tell you that story. I don't know if I did or not. And that's question, question. In my labs plus, this is a second grade book question. wonder why I have two grade book questions on here. What does grade book do? Predicts the, it predicts the temperature for July 4th, 2015. It measures my IQ. It's snow white. Usually, grade book has to do with your grade. Listen, I wrote these questions when I was furious, okay? I made them up. Usually, most of them I made up when I would get a question at the end of the semester. So if they seem a little bit more in the satirical, that's why. Because as soon as I, as soon as I get one of those questions, I write it down, and I write the answers too. Except for Snow White, some of them I just make up. That's a, that's a test question. That's a test question. Coming to the end. Does Hubert replace your lowest test grade with your final exam grade? That's it. Why? Because I've done drop about eight of your lowest test grades before you take the final. So we're done with the test. So even if you're not sentient, you don't know what sentient means? Okay. Not knowing, not alive, Vegetable state. If you're in, if, unless you're in a vegetable state, you should be able to make what on any of my tests? A 40. Has everybody always made 40s on my test? <laughs> no. 
had made 20s, 25s, 30s. Everybody should make a 40. If you ever meet somebody and they walk up to you and say, who'd you get for man? And you say, I got Hubert. And he, they go, he or she goes, oh man, I hated that class. I made 30 in that class. You need to step away from that person very slowly because something is going to rub off on you because they have a sign around their neck now that says, I am stupid. Come on, people. How hard is it to make a 40 on my test? It's not hard. Anybody that makes below a 40 in my class, there's something missing. Either they didn't come to class or something's missing. That's all I'm going to say. Everybody should make above a 40 in my class. Everybody. But if you take the same student that don't know about the zeros on the homework and they don't do that, then that cuts that 40 down to a 30. So that's probably the students that we're talking about. Now, sometimes I give you 33 questions, so that would be a third, 10. So you're going to make a 30 instead of a 40. Sometimes I give you half. Sometimes I give you 20, you know, somewhere between a third and a half is your bonus questions. Now, I do that for two reasons. One, everybody has a bad day taking the test. And I figure that kind of makes you feel better, even though they're goofy and even though they're very difficult to miss, you still, it makes you feel a little bit better taking the test knowing you got something right. Two, the reason I give those questions is because of the directive that we got that we need to assess whether y'all were reading the material in the syllabi and handouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by the time you take eight, four of my tests, you've, had, you've answered the grade book question eight times. So what should that take care of? The question at the end of the semester that says, what's grade book? What if I'm on my grade? It should. Does it? No. It should answer your when is the last day of class question. You had four questions about that. When's the last, when's finals? That answers that four questions. So by the end of the semester, three or four of your questions that you ask are what? Answered. Okay? Who has a, now, what if you want to print out your test? I would suggest you print out your highest grade test because at the end of the semester, the final exam is made up of all your tests. So therefore, I don't have to review for a final because you've got the test there. I don't keep the test locked away in some safe in my office. <laughs> oh, that's another thing. Some people say, I can't believe he showed us the first unit test. I could write wrote down all the answers. You think that's going to be the same test you get? I ain't stupid. Okay? Plus, the computer, I pull the questions. Each one of those questions, if I was to pull that same test up, you get a totally different test because each one of the how many questions were it, was it? Each one of the, except for my, the 17 questions, except for my 10 bonus questions, the 17 math questions, I've got about three to 10 questions for each one of those slots. Then the computer will regenerate the numbers in each one of those. Then I scramble the test to where you have a different order from you. You will have a different order from you. So you can sit side by side in the lab and the chances of you pulling up the same test as your neighbor are going to be zero. All right? Now, you can help each other on the test. It'll just take you more time. And time is your worst enemy. How much time do I give? That one will have 90 minutes. I'm only supposed to give you 50 minutes, one class period. But I give you 90. Why? Take care of that other excuse. I didn't have enough time. Okay, so now I have a 26 in the class. I'm a winner. Look over here. That thing's all filled up. Why? Because I haven't given you any more tests. So that means when all this is filled up, that means you've done what? Everything you're supposed to. If there's a little gap at the end of it, that means what? You haven't done something. 
So the grave book can tell you all kinds of things, especially what your grave is. All right. Who's got a question? I've gone over homework. I've gone over tests. I've gone over grade book. I've gone over chapter contents. And I've gone over study plan. Who has a question for me? Yes. I wouldn't. I would either borrow one from somebody or share one or buy a used one. There is no sense in buying one. Buy the access code. Let me guess. The bookstore's out. Does anybody ask? They're going to run out because it, 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 if they run out, then they can say, oh, here, we got some books over here you can buy. They conveniently run out of access codes. So what I would suggest is go online and when you get to the 14-day trial period button, there's a window for you to type in your access code and then there should be a button for you to buy the access code and if you buy the access code it's probably 10 to 20 dollars cheaper than the bookstore okay and who's got another question yes sir uh when you log on when you go through blackboard and you hit the link and you do whatever that email says and you open up, right click, and open up a new tab, that's probably going to take you to that link that says 14 day trial period. If you do everything right, it'll, you can't bypass that 14 day trial period. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't click on the 14 day trial period unless you know you don't have an access code. Yes. What does it do when you when you do the? I'm logging in. It says something about an error. I need to email or something. Okay, you shouldn't be logging in anywhere. You should be going through. Okay, did you go through Blackboard? Okay, then you need to call. You need to uh, if you've got a if you've got a username or a password problem or login problem, you need to email those two teachers. Uh, K, K Cattlefo at TCTC or R Pepper at TCT and tell them what it's telling you. Uh, chances are you've either forgotten, you've changed your password and you've forgotten it, or you're not using a capital T. What's the error it's giving you? Yeah, you might want to follow along. Did you right click and open a new tab? Um, Try that. Try the email that I sent you. Um, because it sounds like you're doing what the guy in my college algebra was doing. He said he couldn't get through the login process, but he saw the thing that's in that email. He saw it, and he didn't know what. He kept clicking on it, and you're supposed to right-click on it. So try that. Who's got another question? Ms. Vest, you don't have any questions? Uh, I hear you. I'm looking to see. Okay. All right. This is what you need to do. I've already taken the role, but I got two people. Let me check that right quick. It's probably going to log me out because I'm the only one that uses it. Don't leave quite yet. I'm going to go ahead. Well, better not. Let's see. Faculty. Attendance. Uh, who came in late? Uh, Dean Hart and Mr. Vaughn. Both. Okay, the two Vaughn the sisters, brother and sister, right? Okay, you up here. You were a loser. He called you all kind of names for not being here. Okay, so okay, yes. And yes. Okay, that's done. All right, now, homework. You need to get your book squared away. You need to get on course compass, or I'm sorry, my labs plus. Now, what? Now, once you have registered on my labs plus through Blackboard, you can use that website. Let me pull it up for you. I'm gonna give it to you right now.
three letters. I'm not going to say it like I pronounce it because y'all say I don't know how to pronounce it. It's W-W-W. You ever notice how people on TV, they won't say W-W-W, they say W-W-W. And they also say C-L-E-M-C-S-O-N. They won't put the P in there. They'll say clown sign. Anyway, that's uh, TCTC dot mylabsplus.com. And that is after you have gotten onto through Blackboard. Then you can go through here. The reason I give you that is because Blackboard never is up and it's always down whenever you need to take a test so that's why i give y'all that address but do not try it until after you have logged on or after you've registered through blackboard they want you to go through blackboard i don't know why okay who's got another question you have a question yeah it's the same it's, it's the same thing it just doesn't go through blackboard you don't have to you can put this website on your desktop and just click on it and go right to it all right who's got another question all right one figure out your book what you want to do with the book two get logged on get registered get your access code get that done three i want you to start reading chapter five five what is it? a a d and e Did anybody look whatever your syllabus outline says for chapter five it's all reading all definitions what we will do Wednesday is we'll start on the definitions and stuff that you're uh, responsible for on the test. Chapter six will be 80% of your unit one test. So the definitions and terms that you read about in chapter five, that's only worth 20% of your test, which means 20% of your real math questions. Okay? Who's got questions for me? Yes, sir. Yep, you got a test tomorrow. <laughs> got a test tomorrow, and you, and you got 30 minutes to take it. Uh, you don't have anything, just read, okay?